And we're rolling. All right. Well, good morning officially. Another Friday morning, a beautiful, rainy, awesome Friday morning here in Nashville. And um, I've already seen the beautiful blue sky there in California. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, but anyway, we're going to get started here. Excited about turning this call over to Josh and hearing this interview. But before we do, before I do, I just wanted to recognize we had many step ups in uh, we as in the Wisdom Builders team had many step ups, rank advancements in the month of May that just ended here a week or so ago. And so I'll just uh, share them really quickly. Um, so, some of these names and faces I, I can't put a face with because things are happening a lot quicker now and that's a really good thing. Uh, but new managers, Zarina, I'm sorry if I'm butchering a name, Nudalo Cameron and Jewel, Holbrook, um, I believe Jules up in Alaska, and Brant, so two different new managers, but then new senior managers, we had Anna Irene Chamberlain, congratulations by the way, new managers and new senior managers, uh, Anna Irene Chamberlain, Kurt Strouser, Kurt and Julie Strouser, Elizabeth Bowser and Tyrone, her husband, uh, Mark and Kathy Fawcett, by the way, the, this is the way they are, um, Neolife is showing them for recognition purposes. Mark Fawcett, Elizabeth Bowser, Kurt Strouser. If you want your spouses added on there, I know many of you are doing this as a couple. You just need to contact Neolife and get that corrected. Uh, Emerald directors, brand new Emerald directors for the month of May as well. Amanda Smith. And uh, I see, I, I believe that's Tom and Amanda Smith unless I'm wrong, uh, and Audrey and Clint Green, two brand new Emerald Director teams in the month of May, and we had, drum roll, I can't do it as good as Josh, but I do have a wood desk, there, Sapphire Directors, brand new world team members, another world team member, Gabe and Mandy Boer in Post Falls, Coeur d'Alene, Idaho area, so congratulations to everyone that stepped up. I don't know what's going on with the top 20, 90 days of spring leaderboard because it's reset back to 20th place is one point. And I know that's not right. So um, I don't think it should have reset yet because we're not into the third quarter. We still have uh, three weeks left and I don't have that data because the website's not there. But I will tell you this, last month we had many people in Achievers Club 15, 10, and five. 15, the Shepherds, the Merritts, Chelsea Clark, and Alan and Nicole Blaine, all in Achievers Club 15, Achievers Club 10. You're going to hear from them here in a second. Gary and Shelly Lazone, um, the Christina and Joshua Villatoro, Terrence and Emily Clark, Tom and Amanda Smith, Katie and Elisha Votberg, Elizabeth Bowser, Ooh. Liz Moore, Edith Cox, Mandy and Gabe Boer, and Rebecca Sherrick. A ton of Achievers Club 10 month was May was a big month and um, many, many more, many more in Achievers Club 5, which I won't take the time to read right now for sake of time because I know Josh has a lot to cover and can't wait to jump to that. So with that, I will turn it over to you, Josh, and let you take it away. Congratulations to all the step ups, all the Achievers Club um, for May. And let's keep this rocking because we are, what, six, seven weeks away from convention and the momentum's picking up so exciting stuff go ahead josh thank you yes alan it is and i just want i want to join you and echo what you just said and thanking each and every one of you for making uh may which is i know is a busy month i mean I, I if you're like us um and i know you are lots going on in may i mean graduation school activities i mean it is so easy to lose focus and get distracted in May and I want to just thank you guys for keeping your eye on the prize and pressing forward and fitting the business in the nook and crannies but consistently staying focused on doing that and not becoming easily distracted we all love freedom but uh, but but you know we, we it we, sometimes we can struggle and I really did and you know I still got to manage that but early on in my business I struggled big time with managing that freedom you know and uh, you, you can't keep that freedom unless you learn how to manage it, right? So that your business continues to grow so that you can have the freedom to be your own boss. So my point is, we obviously together collectively did a great job because we had a jam up month. Yes, Alan, as Wisdom Builder team, 
We had a jam up month as a company. So many step ups, so many new Sapphires, Emerald directors, directors. It is sizzling. So, um, you know, and that uh, brings us to a couple things that I want to share with you before I jump into this interview. Uh, one is I'm really excited. We're getting ready to take off tomorrow for our first ever Serving is Living trip. This is something that has been on our hearts uh, and minds and planning and trying to get to this day and, and asking God to guide us to this day for several years now. And we're finally having our first trip. And uh, we have uh, 20 people going and I uh, look forward to having even more going. We're bringing a, a videographer with us who's going to capture video that we look forward to sharing. It'll be uh, after this is, this is up, they'll get the video to us. Um, but anyway, we wanna share some of that with you. And just please be praying for us. I gotta just keep everyone safe and bless it. And not only do we wanna be a blessing to others, but we're excited about what's gonna happen in our own lives and our family's lives. We've got teenagers who are going um, as, as we serve together. And you know what I love, I'll just say this very quickly, what I love about this trip and uh, kind of where this is born out of is for, for me, when I started this business, I wanted freedom, back to freedom. I wanted freedom. And I wanted to do something that would allow me to make a contribution as a, you know, to, to fill real needs in the community. Because, um, you know, my mother and, and my father, but my mother was, would always ask, you know, will, will doing that, will doing this, will have a benefit? Will, will, are, you, are you investing in your life? You need to invest your life in something that's bigger than you. And so uh, I saw that was possible with the Neo Life business. And I saw that I could also get freedom and uh, freedom to serve. And uh, so that's kind of where this was all born out of for me. And so uh, this trip serving as living is exciting because everything we're doing every day in this business forces us out of our comfort zone. You know, it forces us to try new things, to take a step of faith, to step out, sharing is caring, right? And love on others, serve others. And through doing that and filling their needs, we prosper. Our businesses prosper. Um, and uh, so with that in mind, we thought, wow, wouldn't this be great to have a serving is living trip where those who want to, and I know a lot of you are serving in a lot of capacity. So by the way, as this trip goes on and we move into the second year, it becomes an annual event and maybe even a couple times a year, several times a year eventually, I hope. Um, we, we know, you know, you can only give in so many, you, know, you can only do so much, right? Um, but uh, this is just another opportunity. Um, some years, you know, you, you, you may want to be a part of it. Other years, you're not able to. But anyway, we'll keep forging ahead and uh, just, just see where this, where this goes but excited about taking the same mindset, expanding our comfort zone, growing personal development, and then taking that to a cross-cultural setting and uh, you know, trying to fill needs there. So anyway, that's what's happening there. So keep us in your, in your hearts and prayers, please. We leave tomorrow and uh, be down there for the next week. Okay, and then moving along, something I wanna share with you before I jump in this interview, which I need to jump into here quickly, but you might wanna write this down. Here's a question for you. Okay, this is something to really think about, meditate on. Do you want to sizzle this summer or settle? Do you want to sizzle or sour? Okay, I, I mean, you are, don't forget, this is like, every time I think about this, I get excited about it. I, I hope it's not lost on you. But you are the CEO. You are the boss. If it's going to be, it is up to you. It, you know, I believe that we are created um, in God's image. He created us as humans in his image. He's given us choices. Every day we get to wake up and decide, he's given us that opportunity to decide, you know, am I gonna hit snooze on the alarm? Am I gonna jump out of bed with enthusiasm? Am I gonna make this summer sizzle or am I gonna let the business sour? Or am I gonna let the business settle? And I'll tell you something, you've heard it said before, and I, but I don't just want you to hear it. I really, it's on my heart to ask you to put together a strategy to pause, grab your spouse, even, or if you have a spouse in the business, if not you, take a moment and develop a plan because the summer will pass you by. You know it just like that. And it'll be over and it'll be done. And yet the summer is the best time to build a business. It is. 
but it's also the most challenging time to stay focused and leverage just a special opportunity. So grab your pen and paper if you're not driving. And a couple things I think you, you, ought to th you ought to consider as part of your strategy. Would you like a few quick ideas? And then we're gonna hear a couple who is on fire and their business is sizzling. It's sizzling and they're gonna take this deeper, okay? But a couple things uh, to write down. One is, have you had your breakfast of champions? Have you had your lunch of champions, dinner of champions? If you haven't, have it. Make sure you have it intentionally this summer. Yes, it may be a little more challenging with schedules and vacations and kids and, and all that, but have it, okay? What about lunch and learns? Yo, I'm getting more and more fired up about lunch and learns. Um, even just the other day, I heard Eric Worre talking about how lunch and learns, he's like, he stopped somebody right in the interview and he said, you know, I'm a big fan of lunch and learns. Lunch and learns are working in our industry. And people who may not even want to go to an evening meeting, you know, will grab a colleague and say, let's go to this lunch and learn. It's one hour and we're going to get a little box lunch or we're going to get fed or we're going to get something. And so, especially if you're in an area where any, you have any neighbors, anything, any businesses, or go into the business and have a lunch and learn, okay? I can't spend any more time on that, but be creative, put together a strategy. And I'll tell you this, it won't always be easy. Let me just be real honest. At our lunch and learn the other day, you want to know what happened in our house before the lunch and learn? Okay, I mean, I was just thinking, if you only knew, you know, the lunch and learn went amazing. We had a bunch of people. We had a million kids and lots of laughter, and it went great. But guess what was happening beforehand? All of a sudden, the kids disappeared, and it was like, okay, uh, we need to work as a family here <laughs> to get this thing off. So we had to come together, had a little, we, yes, we, we even had a little family huddle. And then I just, I just, and I, just I brought them in and, and shared with them how they're a part of this. We're doing this together. And I had to remind them of that. And we prayed that God would help us to care about other people, help all of us and not to be about us, but to put our focus on others and serving them. And then as soon as that was done, it was very helpful. But then one of our kids all of a sudden got an attitude. So then, you know, I need to slow down when I should have been, I've been helping out, but talk with them and listen to them, find out what was happening in their heart. And uh, but I'm just telling you, I thought, man, if people only knew, right? <laughs> You know, it's not always simple. It's not always easy. Um, in the midst of this week, all, all of a sudden, in the Lunch and Learn Wednesday, we knew that Chelsea was probably going to have to have a DNC. Um, you know, that the, uh, when she gave birth to the stillborn child, more details maybe, maybe you didn't want, but I'm just trying to be honest and real here, okay? It was like, I was like, honey, should we cancel Lunch and Learn? That's what I said to her. Listen, I, I'm willing to cancel it. I'm willing to call everybody and say, you, you want to do that? And she's like, no, we're going to go forward. Even though she had something implanted and all, they were trying to get it to, to, to pass and then ended up for a DNC late last night. But I'm just telling you, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. And it turned out to be so rewarding, that event. You know, and, and Chelsea was doing great. We didn't do anything foolish. We didn't. We talked together. We made sure we were together on this. But we both realized that it's, if, if you want an excuse to let your business sour and settle, you don't have to look anywhere. They're gonna pop up everywhere. There'll be plenty of legitimate excuses if you want an excuse. But you gotta decide, are you gonna make this business sizzle this summer? Or are you gonna let it settle to where then you gotta pick the momentum back up and you gotta try to get the business back going. And for some of us, that's the biggest challenge is being your own boss. It's awesome, but it takes some it takes some mindset adjustment, right? Let's be real. Let's be honest. So anyway, um, that's just a little, little page out of our book, but um, maybe that'll encourage you just a little bit. Um, so a couple other ideas, evening meetings, like we're going to have ice cream social and a healthy hour together. That'll be the last Thursday of this month. We're trying to do creative things to make the summer fun, make it sizzle. Um, and uh, by the way, I'm so excited about this fondue maker I found in this business. Did I get your attention? Anybody like fondue makers? Anybody like those fondue machines? I mean, I mean, put some chocolate on it. It's exciting. Healthy strawberries and fruit and all that. You throw a little chocolate on and feel like you're doing something good for yourself. That's great in the winter, summer, all seasons. Guess what I found was our big fondue maker right here in our business we all have access to. You know, I mean, you, you, you stick it in there, let it, you know, let it, let it get all covered in chocolate, pull it back out. It's ready to go, right? It's ready to go. Guess what, our, guess what our fondue maker is? Now that I got your attention, your fondue maker is the Wisdom Builder Health Group. You have people to your events. 
You know, ideally you have them to an event, you know, still, you're still doing the events. You don't get lazy on that. Listen to our next couple talk about this. You need to have your lunch and learns. You need to have your healthy hours. You need to have your one-on-ones. But then take those people, if they're not ready to close yet, or maybe even before they come to the event, and stick them in the fondue maker, you know, and let other people cover it with chocolate and all, and, you know, help out, right? And turn that thing's going to, those people are going to sizzle. They're going to be so excited about getting started. It takes, don't forget, 80% of sales happen between the fifth and the 12th contact. Fifth and 12th, right? Right? So that fondue maker is going to help you. I know it's a different twist on it, but I got your attention. I hope that fondue maker is going to help you close the deal. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be the icing on the top done. Okay? Chocolate on the top. All right. So uh, uh, last, last thing here is, oh, don't forget, we got a nutritional seminar on June 20th. It's going to be one hour. Did I say that? I'm saying it for my own sake. It's going to be one hour, and I'm going to have John Miller on there talking about CoQ10. Now, that's going to sizzle. That's going to sizzle. Some of you are losing focus on CoQ10, and that product is, is magical. So we're going to put the focus back on that one hour, in and out, and we're going to have a great story, too. Okay, with that, we're jumping into the talking about sizzling. Gary and Shelly, where are you? i got to see you. i got to see you. There's Shelly. Where's Gary? Are you guys ready? Gary and Shelly are hot right now. Shelly, can you unmute yourself? Um, yes. Gary, are you there? Hi. I'm here. I mean, all these screens full of people, it's awesome, but I can't find who I... Sorry, someone comes fun. to my door. Randomly. I can see Shelly, that works. Gary, you're there? I'm oh, there here. you are. Yep. Yeah, okay, same screen, perfect. All right, are you guys are you guys going to sit, keep sizzling or are you guys going to settle and sour this summer? <laughs> We're moving. Sizzle. 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 Sizzle, yes. Okay, well, you are sizzling. Listen to this, guys. They had their best month ever in May ever. So many people are sizzling right now, and Gary and Shelly are sizzling like crazy. Um, and so I'm fired up to bring this to you. They also just had uh, a brand new person hit 4,000 in their team. Yeah, how about it? Give them a hand, even if you're muted. Isn't that great? Um, they are focused more on one Ruby than anything. And what I mean is they're, they're going to be there sooner than you think. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I want to ask you guys, first up, I guess, is how are you guys feeling about where you're at and what's happening in your team? What are you most excited about right now? I mean, the mo so, okay, well, I'll just run with this one. The most exciting thing for me right now is the fact that you – it is – it is so simple to generate a tremendous amount of momentum just by changing your mind and deciding that you're actually going to go out and do something like that process in and of itself has the potential to 10 X your business beyond pretty much anything else you can do is just waking up in the morning and saying, okay, I'm actually going to go out and do this every single day and make an attempt and it'll blow your mind to see what happens as a result of that. So that's like the most exciting thing for me right now. Um, I don't know if you have anything to add to that. Yeah, yeah, Gary, tell us real quick. What, what, I mean, everybody thinks you've been a nice guy. I mean, everybody likes Gary who meets Gary. I mean, what happened to you? I mean, <laughs> you came out of that last retreat a different person and I know you uh, as well or better than anyone here. What happened, dude? You're a different guy. I mean, I'm I, I call you to get fired up myself. <laughs> uh it's very simple i'm actually finally just got to a parking lot right now praise the lord so i don't have to be driving let me take my seatbelt off um your dad did a talk about uh the value you would place on your business and i had to actually really sit down and think to myself what value would i place on my business and by by when i say what value would i place on my business what would you sell your business for today um and my, what I would sell my business for at that time did not line up with my personal excitement and interest in what I was doing. In other words, I wouldn't sell my business for all the tea in China. If somebody came to me and offered me a monetary value for it, I would say, no, I'm not selling my business. But I wasn't pursuing my business like I believed that about my business. And so it was more of a thing of like, what a phony baloney. Like I'm sitting here telling myself I wouldn't sell my business for a certain amount of money, yet I'm not treating my business like I wouldn't sell my business for a certain amount of money. Um, and it kind of just blew my mind. And 
I just thought to myself, you know what? I need to change my mind. Like we have to change our mind about our business. Uh, and one thing that I, one thing I really, really like about God and always have liked about God is the fact that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. And he doesn't have to change because he's God. Everything he does is perfect, but we're not. We're humans, right? We're constantly on highs and lows, and we have the ability to change our mind. And so I just thought to myself, you know what? When I get back from retreat, like I am making a conscious decision to change my mind and actually take my business as seriously as I tell myself I take my business. And it was just a very simple light switch for me. Um, and everything as a result of that was a snowball effect to the way I looked at personal development, to the way I structured my day, to the way I overheard uh, in a loving way conversations and instead of ignoring them, decided to ask questions about why people felt the way they did or why they didn't, you know, why they were having the issues that they were having. And it just was a snowball effect. And as a result of changing my mind, everything changed. I mean, it's really very that simple. Gary, you know, I, I want to, and Shelly, I want to come to you in a minute because I want to, I want to hear from both of you. Um, but uh, I know that, I know that Shelly's pretty excited about this and we'll let her comment on this in a minute. But, um, you know, Gary, it's been amazing uh, having a front row seat, um, getting to have the level of friendship and, and which is, which came through this business um, yeah. was, was how we, I get the privilege of getting to know you on the level I've gotten to know you, which makes me thankful for this business. Um, but I, I, you've grown a lot since since i've since i've it's been amazing it's been so much fun so challenging i want to grow like you're growing um but uh so even though you're growing like that i hope it caught everybody's attention and it's not just in one ear and out the other but like asking ourselves are we really playing are we playing at our best and uh, i mean i was fired up about somebody who i don't even think is and, and and I love him just the same, but I don't think he has the same same convictions that I have in my faith, right? And yet he was talking. He's like, he said somebody somebody says, well, I'm happy with eight hundred thousand. He's like, oh, I'm comfortable where I'm at. He's like, how selfish of you? How selfish of you? He said, you know, just because you're comfortable at eight hundred thousand a year, just because you have a beautiful home, just because you have this financial security, how selfish of you? He said, and I'm like listening to this podcast. And not everything did he say that I, that I agreed with, but when he was delivering this message, I was like, brother, you preach it. I love it. He was basically going back to the parable of the talents where, you know, it, in, in the scriptures where it's, hey, what did you do with what I gave you? You wasted it. You squandered it. How dare you? And I think that's a message that, Gary, watching what's happening in your life and how you're taking it to the next level has, is really convicting, I hope, for all of us. And I'll never forget right after you and I met for lunch. And, y'all, this was such kind of a breakthrough. I mean, don't miss this. I, mean, I remember, Gary, you saying, Josh, I, I don't think people know. I think yeah. I got people kind of fooled. I yep. mean, and again, and I've already seen you grow a lot. It's not like you weren't doing anything, y'all. <laughs> I mean, they've won some great awards, doing some great things. But you were like, I think I've fooled myself. I got other people. Maybe you said that, but I at least got other people fooled. And I remember you're like, Josh, let's just between you and I don't say anything right now. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, I mean, I need to talk to my wife about this. I, I need to talk to other people about this. I, I need to, I need to make sure I, I'm ready for this change. And, uh, but you said I am, and I'm telling you is I want accountability. Now my yeah. point is y'all, you can fool everyone, including, even including yourself. And Gary, so now tell us, Tell us what ha you are talking about, how even some conversations that you could overlook people in your life. Yeah. Um, not everyone, but you were overlooking opportunities. Tell us about the one the other day that you were so fired up about. It was actually yesterday. Um, so in my, in my day job, I have the ability to go and develop relationships with certain accounts. I'm an outside sales. And I've, I've known this particular person for like a year and a half. Um, and really it was never more than just in and out conversation. You know, can you help me grow my, my bit, my, not my new life business, the other business. And what can I do to help you? And very transactional. And uh, yesterday I overheard her say that she was going home because she didn't feel well. And typically I would have just said something like, Oh, well, I hope you feel better, you know, but instead, because I've now changed my mind and I'm hearing things differently. I said, Oh, well, why aren't you feeling well? Well, yesterday I had a terrible migraine. 
And then I said, do you get migraines often? And she said, I get migraines all the time. And I said, if I had something that could help you with your migraines, would you be open to learning about it? Her eyes lit up. Absolutely. So I started sharing the products with her, telling her about the products. Um, and then she went into how she also has, you know, terrible anxiety. And so I said, you know, anxiety could also be a nutritional deficiency. And she said, I don't think it's so much a nutritional deficiency for me right now. I have a lot of things going on in my life. And I had an opportunity to shift from focusing solely on the products to more like actually caring about somebody. And he said, well, tell me what's going on in your life. And she's got an, an eight-year-old son. Um, she's not with the father anymore. And he's a very controlling, manipulative person. And he's doing things to her that is really um, crushing her. Uh, the other day, he actually called her on FaceTime and attempted suicide while he was on FaceTime with her. And I just like kind of broke down um, and just immediately was like, you know what? Like you need to get plugged in to everything I'm doing. Like, can you please come to church? Um, I would love to have your eight-year-old son in my class as a student for Sunday school. The women in our church can, you know, love on you. And uh, it, it was a turning point for me because the business, personal development in the business and going from listening or going from knowing somebody for a year and a half and not thinking anything more than just, you know, hey, have a good day to now actually listening and caring and wanting to help with the products and then going deeper and really um, finding a, a true need for somebody uh, was like a light bulb moment for me. And then all of a sudden it was like, okay, this is why we do what we do. Like we have the ability to help people mind, body, and soul. And it was like, you know what I mean? Like those, yeah. those moments are like light bulb moments. And it was crazy, you know, <laughs> and whether or not she uses the products, Hey, you know what? I'm convinced she's probably going to use the products, but if she doesn't, I have an opportunity to actually serve and love somebody as a result of my transformation, as a result of getting into the business and deciding I was going to actually do something rather than do nothing. It's crazy. It's a, it's crazy. <laughs> you know what? It's amazing. I love it. And you're going out there and uh, I love it. Okay. So we're going to go to, go to Shelly here for a moment. Shelly, mm -hmm. um, you got to tell us, uh, first of all, what, who is this new guy in your home? <laughs> I mean, what do you think about this? You're like, I don't, you know, it had to sink in. Cause at first I would just kind of stare at him, like the drive home from Oregon um, you know, he just kept saying, we have a lot to talk about. And when we get home, we're going to sit down and write things out and write goals. And I'm like, I wonder what you're thinking. Like, do I have to wait till we get all the way home or do you want to talk for hours and let me know now? And so, um, but you know what, long story short, it truly has been life changing for even myself, just seeing him. And I'm just so glad that I wasn't the one <laughs> to, to nag him in the sense of joining the business 110%. Mm -hmm. Again, he's always been supportive. Um, he's always been there, went on trips with us and stuff. But now ever since that retreat, it's really, really turned a corner. And it's been so much fun doing it together. Um, and just seeing him presenting and doing this amazing presentation every time it's mind blowing. I mean, people to come to me and say, wow, that was an amazing presentation. 30, 40 minutes. I was fully engaged the whole time. And, um, so yeah, I'm just very blessed to, um, to do this together with him. So yeah. But you know what, Shelly, I don't want anybody to lose sight of this. It started, it starts with one, it starts with one. Y'all, y'all listen, everybody wants to have a partner who's on fire. Everybody wants to have a director underneath them who's on fire. Everybody says, if I only had one more person with me, oh my gosh, if I had a spouse on fire, that would be amazing. But you know what, y'all? When we went to that first retreat, it, you know, and Gary told me nothing's off limits. It, you know, I talked to him before the call. He's like, no, you can tell everybody that I said, this is between you and me. It was then, but now it's not. He said, this is open for anyone. But uh, that first retreat even, I'll go back to that. I mean, I'll never forget. We're riding up there in the, in the motorhome. And Gary's telling me, I ain't going to the retreat. I'm here. I'll help watch kids. You know, I'll be supportive. But I, I am not. I mean, he was as clear as a bell. 
I am not going into the retreat and know what that's all about. I don't do that. I don't even do it for work unless I have to. <laughs> I mean, he was so clear. I will never forget it. And then, uh, but anyway, we're not going back to that story. We don't have time. But the point is, Shelly, you were at that retreat because you talked him into it. <laughs> you were focused on the business. You were all in. And mm -hmm. I remember when you were wanting him to be all in, and he was only at that time able to be supportive, which was awesome. And some of the spouses are saying on the call, oh, I wish mine was supportive. But you know what? Guess what? You're gonna, if that's true, you're going to have a bigger story than Gary and Shelly, okay? If you're having to do it all alone, guess people are going to say, if you can do it, I can do it. Oh, my gosh. But hang in there. Okay. We got so much to cover. Shelly, what's happening right now with the team here? I mean, another person hit 4,000 this past month. Things are blowing up. And it shows no, this is just the tip of the iceberg. Well, tell us about what's happening. What's leading to this sizzle? Yeah. So I think like you were saying, um, having events, I think like I've always said, you have to have events. You have to go to events if you want to succeed. Showing that community, opening up your home. Like you said, it doesn't always go smooth. In fact, almost a, a lot of the time I'll say before an event, something goes wrong kids are fighting, the food's not done, I forgot something, oh my gosh, the presentation, I mean, just everything I feel like is not in place, right? And it's that push that you say, I'm going to do it anyway. Um, or my house isn't clean. It's okay. It's actually more relatable when someone comes over and there's clothes still folded on the couch, right? It's normal life. And so not looking for that perfection, but still doing what brings people to come over for community to want to hang out, to want to learn more about what you're doing because they find it attractive is so important. So I think the continual every single week having people over, whether it's we do dinners, um, we do um, <clears throat> barbecues, and now that it's summer, we're going to have regular barbecues and just get togethers where people know that we are in it truly to get to know them. And if they want to join, awesome. If they don't want to join, that's awesome too, because it's, it's all about the relationship. And um, so really sacrificing some things is so worth it. So worth it. So just weekly events, um, <clears throat> I think is our biggest thing in, in, in keeping the Neo Life funnel coming in and mm -hmm. showing, people, look, we are serious. We're leaving on this train. If you want to be a part of it, please do. If not, we're still leaving. We're not going to, you know, slow down our momentum because um you know if we're just we're just not slowing down yeah. we're going they can play at whatever level they want but they know <laughs> where you're headed and speaking of that y'all let's let's celebrate something together y'all want to celebrate a big milestone in their life shelly you got some big news for us what is it i'm retiring august 15th from doing hair i'm super Yay, everybody let's put our hands together isn't that exciting Y'all, hairstylists do very well. I mean, a good hairstylist like Shelly, I mean, if you don't mind me saying this, Shelly, they make bank, okay? Um, a good hairstylist does very well. And uh, Shelly, tell us a little bit about what this means for you guys. And then, um, Gary, I'm going to come back to you in a moment to comment on that and, and what's happening to the team. But Shelly, first, tell us about what does this mean for you? What does this moment mean so we can fully appreciate it? How it's going to impact your life and lifestyle. Um, so I've been doing hair for 16 years now. And I started out, just to give you a little background, uh, I've always wanted to do hair. Growing up, I'd always brush my sister's hair, my mom's hair. When they would get sick and tired of that, I would ask my dad to brush his hair. And um, I just always wanted to do it, didn't know how. Got my foot in the door in Orange County moved to Beverly Hills, did hair out there for a while, met the most amazing people, worked with celebrities. I mean, the whole nine yards. And I say that humbly, but just want to give you a background of just my passion and, and, and my drive and how much I learned just working there and, and has really set me up for success in the hair world. And when I moved to San Jose, I opened up my own place in, out of our home and, and did that for the last four years that we've been here. And I absolutely still to this day love doing hair. There is nothing that has um, 
I'm not tired of doing it. I'm not burnt out of doing it. I am actually more excited to do hair today than ever. And so for me to, to come to this, well, not me, um, lots of prayer and also just with talking with Gary, should I do this? You know, is this the right time? And because I love it, it made it hard. Um, and so now that I have actually pulled the trigger and told my clients, this is, I'm done August 15th. Um, it's bittersweet, but this is the secret. I found a better way. And what I mean by that is I'll never forget when Chelsea Clark came to sit in my chair in my salon. She said, after talking for some time, you have to have a, client sitting in your chair in order to get paid. And if someone's not sitting in your chair, you're not getting paid. And that was a red flag for me. And I thought, man, I just, I knew that there was a, there was a better way. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was network, network marketing. I knew my whole life that there was something that could help with freedom that could help with me being a stay at home mom that I wanted to be home with my kids and give them all I can because they're going to leave the house one day. And that time goes by so fast. And so I just knew deep down there was a better way to, to live my life personally and what I was wanting. And so to answer your question, the, the decision to retire is going to help with more time with my kids. I homeschool them so I can actually give them my all um, and, and really devote that time with them. And also with, you know, with Gary, his, his hours being flexible, you know, um, is really, really helpful too. But, um, but yeah, just, I, I'm just excited for this near future that that's going to take place. And I really truly feel so blessed to be able to have the career of, of transforming people's hair. I mean, it's truly amazing to, to have the ability to do that, but now go in this other direction where I feel like the Lord is, is, is directing me, um, into this new season. So, so now instead of just transforming hair, you're transforming lives from the, from the, from the tip of their the tip, the top of their head to the tip of their toes, right? Total life transformation. And it started out of a business that you said yes to. And I still remember that first day, even at dinner in our house, you know, Gary was like, no, no, I know what this is all about. No, 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 this is no, no. I mean, He was right, right there up front. No, no. So we're not joining some Amway thing. And uh, I remember you kind of letting him be Gary, but, and then I hear later on, you know, from Gary, well, my wife is good. She's doing this thing, but this is her thing. I support it to talk about transformation. You know, started with you. Well, so you're transforming everyone, not just hair now. And that is an amazing impact well, that you're having. Not to mention the income in your best month ever. Wow. Yeah. And, and I think Gary knew that I was going to do this with him or without him. Yeah. <laughs> <Because> <laughs> it, it would bring us freedom if he could just wait <laughs> and just hold on that I'm all in or nothing kind of gal. And so... I, I knew that I could do this with the help of you guys. I knew I can do it. I knew the Lord would give me the ability and, and, and all of that. So I knew that if he, you know, just keep praying for my husband and just that maybe he would see something that, that he would actually enjoy doing one day. And if not, that's okay. I'm thankful for his, his, um, his support. Um, but I mean, it, this is truly like, like nothing else. I mean, this yeah. is the best we ever made well I want to come to you back to you guys and I'll, and I'll let Gary start with this um, but I know you guys are really excited and, and we're gonna have to wrap up here in just a couple minutes um, this, this nobody wants to leave this sizzling interview though um, but but I do want to make one quick comment I'll just real quick and I'm going to Gary and that is there was a time y'all when Shelly and you correct me if I'm wrong otherwise we'll keep going but there was a time when Shelly wasn't sure how long she could do hair, even though she loved it. She knew she may be forced into early retirement because of the way it was hurting her health. Mm -hmm. Now, thanks to Neoli, you could continue to do it, you know, you know, potentially forever. But you found, as you said, a better, an even better way. Um, Gary, uh, 
Is that right? And then that is true. comment on the team. And then I know Shelly will want to jump in too. You guys let loose. I know you're excited about what's happening and you were telling me that. As far oh, as I'm what's sorry, happening I'm... to your team. Oh, well, just a, like I said, a ton of momentum. We've, uh, you know, we have uh, Bart and Cassie Gant that have been in our, that have been with us now for a little over two years, rock solid, just continuing to grow and just a good brother and a good, um, just a good family uh, that have been a part of what we're doing. And, you know, relationships is a big piece of um, growing a Neo Life business. And that was a whole that is now filled with a loving relationship with uh, the Gants and they're growing and it's super exciting to see them growing and doing certain things that they may or may not have done without the business as well. Uh, we have uh, quite a few other folks that um, we've been able to really just drill down with and do life with on a whole nother level that we wouldn't have been able to do uh, if it wasn't for the business. Uh, Nikki and Addy, uh, Nikki and Addison Beck is an example of that. Um, Lauren Allen McClinton are an example of that. Um, our new, our newest senior managers, uh, Ann Irene and Michael are an example of that. Uh, Christina and Josh Villatoro are an example of that. Just a, just a ton of, uh, people that we've been able to just have a, a whole lot of fun with growing the business, uh, doing life together and being able to really just, um, sharpen each other in every area of our life. So yeah, the team aspect of it is, you can't, it's an indescribable. You really can't put a, put, you can't describe it really. It's something you got to experience, you know, as you grow a team yourself. Yeah. Shelly, any closing comments as we wrap this up? Um, we just have an awesome team. Super thankful for each and every one of you. If you're on the call, it's just been such a delight to work with you and just stand beside you and, and watch you grow. And, and believe it or not, you guys inspire me. That's what's fun and, and exciting that, that, you know, you might not feel like you're giving, but you are, believe me, it's very, very fun. Um, I just wanted to share this quick story about a uh, friend we met at, um, uh, at our new church and she gave me a uh, full, uh, brain to, to share her story. Um, but I will say it in, in two minutes, uh, she came over her and her husband and their two kids for, um, for dinner. We just wanted to get to know them. And she shared with me, I mean, like we talk, like I've known her for years and she just opened up and, and, um, shared with me that living has been really hard for them and that financially it's been absolutely straining on, on their marriage um, on their jobs and just a very, very stressful life. Um, they're living paycheck to paycheck, barely making ends meet. Um, you know, grandparents pitching in for, uh, you know, some support for their kids so they can stay active. Kids have to go to summer camps during the summer because the parents work. Um, and, and I'll never forget, she was sitting in my living room just saying how very little she had in her account that day. And she had no idea about Neil life. She had no idea what it was, what we did, nothing. And I was like, wow, Lord, this is a big one. How am I going to, I literally, I lit up and was like, I wanted to tell her like, girl, I, I can help you, you know, and just pour into her. But I thought she might think I'm a freak, right? <laughs> like, when she finds I, out, I mean, network marketing, she's already going to think I'm a freak, which hey, I got nothing to lose. Right. <laughs> so I told her, I said, well, okay, so tell me more. And I'm trying to hold back and be a good listener. And I'm praying like, Lord, help me give me your words. And she just told me, she said, look, not too long ago, at one point, my husband and I and our, my, our kids were homeless. And um, that really touched my heart because I know that this business can help them, that they can come from a stressful life, from a, a, uh, financial stressful life to as big as they want it. And, and it was a, an amazing moment with them. I'll never forget. They've been over since we've been there and she wanted to sign up that night to become a promoter. We knew that, um, you know, that, that she needs to talk to her husband, which I love that she said that she wanted to be, respect, be respectful and I said, absolutely. And, uh, so anyway, long story short, they got their three for free. Um, already, and she's already working, um, 
uh, towards her business. She's, she wants to get as help as many people as she can. You can tell she's passionate. You can tell that she's sick and tired of being sick and tired. You can tell that she's over the lifestyle that she is living. She's already thinking about going part-time and, and rearranging her finances so that she can go part-time because she wants to do more things with us so that she can help build her business while she's, she wants to save up to buy the biggest kit. And you know what she told me? The reason why I want to buy the biggest kit is because it's going to give me the most benefits, the most payoff and put both feet forward and run. And I'm like, yes, I will run with you. That's what it's all about is, is running with these people that want to run. And I just can't, I mean, we're already doing it. We're already doing it. Praise the Lord. And it's all glory to him. You know what? He's bringing us these people and it's the, the, this goes way deeper than doing hair. So that's all I got. Thanks so much. That's awesome, Shelly. Um, I, I wish everyone could know if you haven't yet, I know many of you have, what it feels like to have the blessing of hearing someone in your team share stories like that and to know that you even got to have a little part of that, even though I don't know anything about that. I can't wait to get to, to know that person and to interview that person and have them share the story. But to know that that's within your organization, you know, and maybe you had like got to do something little, you know, and that trickle, trickle down and the dominoes, you know, um, it feels amazing. I put tears in my eyes because I feel like somehow I got to be a little part of it. So that's cool. I want everyone to experience that. Um, Gary, any final comment? We, we'll, we'll close this out. I know people got to get back to work and on with their day, but uh, Gary, you might want to say something then. Uh, I'm just going to share what, what really has been my number one kind of motivating factor lately. And it's just like this concept of wellness. Most people think wellness is just, you know, taking care of yourself, not having to be on medication, managing your weight, so on and so forth. But um, the definition of wellness is it's a conscious, self-directed, evolving decision to achieve your full potential. And that really was, that's kind of the thing that I constantly am thinking about every day is like, we are created in God's image. We do have the capacity to achieve so much, um, but most of us don't. In fact, we probably only achieve a very small percentage of what our full potential is. And so my new kind of thing is, what am I going to do every day to uh, make one conscious step, conscious step towards evolving into my full potential and what God has called me to do, called our family to do, called my kids to do. And how can I be an example uh, to other people who want to do that as well? So love it. Awesome. That's it. Gary and Shelly, thank you so much. Thanks to everybody for taking time from your day because these stories, I'm telling you, this is what we need, not only for you and me, I need this, but we need to go take these stories and share the power of someone else's story can literally be the difference in changing a life. You're doing so much more, each of you are, and I thank you. You're doing so much more than building a business and building financial freedom. You're doing that. Building residual income, you're doing that. A business can be passed for generations to come, you're doing that. But you know, you're doing so much more. You stepping out and goes back to what that interview I heard where the person said, so you're comfortable, so you're okay. And, and, and this was the other person's words, okay? But I, I can't disagree. Remember, he said, how selfish of you. How self Perhaps you're being very selfish just because you're comfortable right now. And he said, maybe you're making 800. And this is what I didn't say earlier. He said, maybe you're supposed to make 10 million. Maybe you're supposed to give 9 million away. Maybe you're supposed to fund this charity and give to that organization. Maybe you found a major need that needs to be filled and you gotta get out there and push yourself further. And so I don't know what you're supposed to do, y'all. And this is not meant to heap any guilt on anyone. It's meant to say what Gary just said. You know, you're, you're created, we're created for so much more. What is that more? Let's go out there and seize it. Let's be like, uh, let's be the best version of ourselves, um, And let's make this summer sizzle as we head into convention and let's make 2020 absolutely our best year ever and why did i say 2020 i'm telling you i got this feeling just deep inside i believe 2020 is going to blow our minds 
And I think everything we do this summer is going to build the momentum this summer through the fall. I know some of you are like, I'm already having a 2019. That's the best year ever. I know. And that's awesome. But we ain't done yet. And everything you do is leading up to, to a great year in 2020. It could be a year we never forget. 2020. All right. Alan, any final comment? I know we've gone a little long, but wasn't that great hearing from Gary and Shelly? It was incredible. And all I have, I know we're... Uh... There was so much great stuff shared. I don't want to dilute it down. I just want to say thank you, Gary and Shelley, for being willing to come on and share. It's contagious. Your enthusiasm, um, taking action, obviously is delivering results for you and many others that are doing the same. So thank you for your time. That's all I have, Josh. Thank you. Good. Goodbye, everyone. Have a great weekend. Come next week. It's going to be a great call. It's going to be a great one. Yep. Get to hear from uh, the world team members next, next Friday. Joel and Gabby Merritt. See you guys.